Welcome back to another Olive video editing tutorial. In this video, we'll be learning about keyframes within Olive, and we'll be doing a basic animation using keyframes. So what I want to do is take this Olive logo here that has sort of a transparent background and place it on top of this brick and wood background, maybe have it slide in from the side and then jump out and then slide over to the right. That's very similar to the intro splash screen I have at the beginning of all my YouTube videos. And we can create that very similar look in Olive. I created mine using Natron, but you can create almost the same thing using Olive. So here's how we'll do it. Uh, first of all, we need to bring uh, over our uh, overlay this logo on top of, so put it on a higher track than this image on the background. We've done that in the past. So now we can move this around. Oh, I'm selecting the wrong one. Control Z. If I select here, we can move this around. And the kind of the look we want it to be is sliding in, getting larger, getting and then getting smaller, and then sliding out. That's what I want to create that animation. Well, if we come over here to effects, we can see transform is an effect. So the location of this on the video is considered an effect in Olive. So the effect right now is changing the position. If we move this up to the top left, we see these numbers here change. And we can also use these numbers to change the location of it. Well, that's nice, but if we want it to move here and then we hit play, it just stays there the whole time. So keyframe lets us uh, set a reference point for the for the position of this, which maybe we'll have it start almost off screen here. And then after that reference point is set, we can change these numbers and it'll gradually incrementally move this uh, icon as the video progresses. So I'll, I'll just show you what that's like. So to do it, we have to we have to come over here, and I want to draw your attention to this timeline. If we move this playhead here, it also moves the same playhead here. In the Effects tab, it's divided into two sections, and we have the actual effects and settings, and we also have a uh, kind of a node graph or a, a node timeline. Right now, it's completely empty, but if we come over here and go back to the very beginning, and we on position, we just click this button here, which is Enable Keyframes. As soon as we left click this, uh, this these options appear. It's This button lets us place a node and it automatically placed one by default. It's kind of subtle, you might not have even noticed. This little diamond or triangle here, it's actually half of a diamond. That is our key frame and that's set right here. So just like anytime we, we make changes, we have to have two reference points, a beginning and then a, a point in time where it changes. This is the beginning point. So if we hit play right now, nothing is going to change because we don't have our second reference point, our second keyframe. We need to add that in. We can add it anywhere. We can add it here right now just by clicking. In fact, let's do that. If we click this button, we see a keyframe appears here. This is the keyframe. If we left click on it, we can also delete it. We can move to a different point and create the keyframe. We can create as many as we want. And then every time we make a change in there, it will automatically um, That'll be the reference point for the changes. But let's delete these because another way we can do it is just by making a change. If we make a change over here, it automatically creates a keyframe for us. So we don't have to add them in manually if we don't want to. We can just make a change or we can even come over here. Oh boy. We can even click on this and delete. And if we just move to a different point in time and then drag and move this, that creates the, a keyframe too. Let's just see what this exact keyframe did. If we now, if we slide this, it shows from here to here. This is what's happening. So over time, it's moving just like this between those two points. So let's click and delete this one because where I really want it to go is by the end of the video clip. That's where I want my keyframe to be. So I'll click, maybe I'll do it right here so I can see it. So I'll click and add that keyframe in. And I'll just say by the end of the video, I want it to be all the way over to here. Now I can watch my video. It's just going to slide along. That's all it's going to do. And again, that's just two reference points. One reference point here, one reference point here, and the only difference is the position. So now if we change the size of this, maybe we want it to be really big here in the middle. We make it really big. And then we think, well, since we did that, maybe it'll just like kind of jump out as it's going along. Well, it's not going to. It's just going to stay big the whole time because we didn't set keyframes on scale, but we can. 
So let's actually come over here. Let's put the scale back down to 100 ish. Let's go back to the beginning of the video and let's enable keyframes on scale. So we select this and now we have keyframes enabled on scale and we've set a keyframe at the beginning of the video. So now we come about to the middle of the video and we want it to um, maybe get large as it's going there. We can just change the size of it and as we do it, a keyframe appears. So let's make it kind of larger like this. And then let's come forward to a different point in time. Maybe as it comes here, we'll make it small again. So now we have a couple keyframes and we don't really need one at the end of this. It'll just stay. Just these three keyframes will be enough to create that look. So it's going to go, it's going to slowly get larger. Oh, it would have been nice to set a keyframe here. So I'll set a keyframe and let's make it small so that it grows as it's going. Perfect. So now we've got sort of that look happening. Something else, um, this it's covered up by my head right now, but there's this graph editor and I can break it out and we can look and see. This graph editor shows us as we make changes to these, um, this graph editor will also change. So this graph editor is also going through in time and showing us uh, different points. This is at the beginning. So if we come here and change this reference point at the beginning for scale, we see this graph also changes. And so um, we and we can jump to the next keyframe. So these are all different keyframes that we're jumping to. So, but I wouldn't I wouldn't pay much attention to the, the graph editor right now. But just know that it's also going to be a tool you use in conjunction with keyframes. So I'm going to put that back down where it was in the corner behind my face. Uh, and I think I'm just going to leave it there. Or maybe we'll do one more thing. Let's come over here to the about to the beginning. And if we want to apply rotation, again, if we rotate this, and then we move to another point and rotate it again, it's not going to animate in rotation. It's just going to stay stuck in that rotation because we didn't set keyframes for rotation. So it's we have keyframes set for position and scale, but not rotation. If we want to set keyframes for rotation, we enable them. But wherever we enable them is where the first keyframe will appear. So right now we're towards the end of our timeline. Uh, things are already over here, but we'll let's enable it. We'll enable rotations. Now we have a keyframe there, so we have to set the other reference point earlier in time. So we can move this to over here, and then we can set a keyframe uh, right there, and then we'll change the rotation up a little bit. And again, just changing the rotation would have automatically set a keyframe anyway. Now we'll see this will do a little bit of rotation as it goes. So that is using keyframes on the transform node. Now we could change the opacity, we can keyframe opacity, we can keyframe the anchor point for the rotation. Um, we can come in here and we can keyframe all these different things. Color correction has keyframe like for the temperature, we can change the temperature of the, oh, that's not going to do much on there, but we can change the contrast here at this point and then have it change again at this point and that's going to actually adjust the color, uh, the contrast of this as it goes along. So anytime you see this symbol, you can keyframe it. So go ahead and play with those. In the next video, we're going to jump through some different things like keyframing text. We'll do more with keyframing color or crop or some of these other options and effects that we have. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and leave your questions and comments below if you have any, and I'll catch you in the next video.